Hello fellow art lovers, welcome back. Today we're looking at why and how you get cells with a butane torch. Here on the table, I've got a little mess, but we're looking at plastic, we're looking at vinyl, and we're looking at latex. Don't worry about where I got the latex from. It's clean. First, let's compare the properties of plastic, specifically our acrylic paints. What is in our acrylic paints will tell us why we get cells and how to get more when you're using a butane torch. In every acrylic paint, you have plastic, you have color, and you have something that makes it liquid. These are more properly known as pigment, the color, uh, the acrylic resin, or the binder. Like here we have a nice solid flat clear sheet of acrylic plastic. Same thing as in the paint. It's plastic acrylic but this is thicker and this does not have any pigment and this does not have any emulsifier. Nothing to keep it liquid, nothing to make it so that we could just squirt the paint out. Paint is those three components. Color, plastic, and something that makes it liquid. This is acrylic like our sheet of plastic wrap here represents our acrylic. Gluol is a polyvinyl acetate or PVA glue. It's liquid vinyl, which means it's similar. It can work as an extender, which is a fourth component to our acrylic paints because adding Gluol, adding Liquitex pouring medium, adding Floetrol, these things do not change our paint into something new, it just makes it runnier paint because we're adding an extender. That is the fourth category and we have vinyl and we have latex as extenders. Liquitex pouring mediums work more similar to an emulsifier, something that's already present in the acrylic paints, which is why you use less of it. The pros and cons of that, of course, are Liquitex is expensive to do a lot of pours because you have to use more paint and they just don't sell big bottles of Liquitex. So we're looking at the extenders and how you get cells with these. That is to say we only need to look at these two specifically, our Floetrol and our Gluol, because Liquitex is not considered an extender so it doesn't alter the properties of our acrylic paint so there's no new information to demonstrate here. Instead, we're looking at the chemical properties, the chemical compounds and makeup of these uh, semi-plastics, I guess we would call them. So acrylic is a plastic. Vinyl, PVA glue is a vinyl. And latex is what we have in our Floetrol. You can see right here on the label, it says latex based paint additive because this is latex, liquid latex. Assuming that we've taken the proper safety precautions, like for example, keeping our windows open and well ventilated, keeping protective equipment on our faces when we do this, and just in general, having fire extinguishing safety material on hand, we're going to start lighting some of these plastic and plastic substitutes on fire so we can see what is happening uh, more clearly when we use our butane torch. Do not try this at home. We have our butane torch. We have plastic. This is one thin sheet of acrylic plastic so we can see what's going on when we roll out some of our paint on our poured painting. Remember, as we do this, we're looking at layer and layer and layer and layer of paint on top of each other when we're doing our poured paint technique. So what we're seeing here will be a lot larger than what you would normally see on a poured painting because this is just one sheet of plastic compared to the many different layers of color that have been spread out on a painting. You can see here that our acrylic plastic is not melting, not in the traditional sense. It's not catching fire, it's not clumping up or making a mess. All it's doing is opening in the middle. The fire produces a weak point in which the plastic is no longer strong enough to stay connected. So the rest of the tension around the plastic pulls it 
out in a circular motion in an even distribution of pressure and it's especially circular when this paint is still liquid when we have liquid plastic um, as I angle this for you real quick you can see we still have our uh, typical little circular shaped holes because this is exactly what's happening on a much larger level when we're pouring paint. Now let's look at vinyl for our Elmer's glue all and then latex for our flow troll. <laughs> so with our vinyl it does not It does not melt in a similar fashion. In fact, it just burns. It literally catches on fire and is not a viable uh, medium for work with a torch. This is literally liquid vinyl and it works in a similar fashion. You're not going to get holes like you do with acrylic or with solid plastic because it doesn't function the same. All it does is weaken the structure of the vinyl plastic. And lastly, we have our latex. Still catches fire. Neither of these are plastics, so neither of these will create the same open cell formation. Mm, that's tasty. Neither of these will create the same open cell formation that just straight acrylic plastic will perform. So why then is it possible for us to get those open shapes when we add additives like Floetrol and glue all to our paints? Let me clean the surface off and then let's get an answer for you. Okay, we're actually going to make just one little mess before we get to the painting. And I have my metal surface here because we're going to melt some more plastic. This is another chip of our acrylic plastic. And sure, it takes a lot longer to do so, but notice that it still didn't catch on fire the same way. Acrylic simply has different chemical properties than our latex and then our vinyl. So, even though we've seen acrylic, latex, and vinyl, even though we've seen all three literally catch on fire and melt away once they're subject to heat, at thin quantities, acrylic does not do that. Acrylic will instead open up and go with the path of least resistance, subjecting itself instead to surface tension. And when you're working with liquids like paint, there was a lot of surface tension because there's a lot of water. And water and the emulsion in acrylic paint, the things that keep the plastic bits and the color bits all fluid together, that stuff helps create those openings when you introduce heat to the plastic bit. So we're going to conclude this little lecture of ours with one final demonstration. We're going to mix a couple colors together real quick and I'm going to show you again how to guarantee better cells when you're working with a torch. So pretty standard. We have paint, we have Floetrol, we have water, my usual recipe, and we're going to mix this up, dump it out. Look at this lovely little purple and blue pour. Sometimes you can get such pretty results with just a couple colors. So, note, 
we have a lot of thin little layers in paint here but there are so many little layers of the blues and the purples all stacking up on top of each other and creating the image we see right now. There is no silicone in this because silicone is kind of cheating for this technique and I only want to illustrate the acrylic itself. If we were to take this, we're going to get good cell opening right now because we haven't manipulated this paint aside from putting it in the cup and then putting that onto the table, which means we still have a lot of very thin layers of plastic like our plastic wrap, so we'll get a lot of openings when we torch it. And it almost looks like a spider web now. There are so many tiny, tiny, tiny little holes. And again, they're tiny because we did a very small puddle. The larger the surface you work with and the more the paint is spreading, the larger the holes become because again, what's happening is we're putting a hole in the middle of the plastic and then that hole opens as the rest of the paint spreads out. So we're not seeing a lot of spread because the paint itself isn't moving very much, but we did see a lot of holes open because we have thin acrylics. So that's your answer. If you move the paint around too much, which I'm gonna do now, if you are having trouble getting cell formation with your torch, it's for one of two reasons. One, you're overworking your acrylics, by which I mean you are doing too much back and forth, too much of this. It might still look like you have patterns where you're at, but what's happening now is we took that plastic wrap and we just scrunched it over and over and balled it against itself. And that's what happened. Uh, that's why you're not getting the torches. You can see this is the same exact paint we're doing. And in theory, we should still be able to create cells, but the paint is blending together. Uh, the pigment itself is getting close at a level that our eyes can't see the difference in color. And we can still create gaps with the heat. We can create gaps in the binder, the plastic part of it, and open these holes. But the pigment itself has already been mixed. So even if we're opening holes, we're not going to see a change in pigment or the color of the paint because it's been blended too much. Yeah, I mean, a couple extra little bubbles, but nothing, no noticeable changes, nothing visible. So, if you're not getting cells when you work with your torch, one reason is you've moved the paint too much. If you want to torch it, torch it first, and then move it. The other reason that you're not getting anything with your torch is because there's too much additive. Like our Elmer's glue, like our Floetrol, there's too much of these in your recipe. If you're still torching right at the beginning of your pour, if you've torched before you've even moved the paint and there's still no cells, it's because your recipe has too much additive inside of it and the paint simply can't open up. It's no longer a majority acrylic. Like we saw at the beginning with all the fire and stuff, that's basically what's going on in your paint. Not long enough that it'll literally catch on fire, but enough that it can't open in those circular cell shapes. So consider that. Those are the two reasons and two things you can do to get more cells with your torch. Notice too that we can still, this is liquid, but we can still burn the surface if we just fix the flame on a single point. And we've just fried it right up and it's starting to burn. Uh, so, again, all the properties of plastic are transitive in this use case. The plastic still works very much like plastic does. And we've seen all the components, the color, the binder, and the emulsifier all work together exactly as expected. Uh, from the blending and the separation to the reaction to heat all the way down to burning it. We have a wet burn, if you can believe that. So, I hope you've enjoyed watching this. I hope it's been informative. I hope you don't get any ideas and you don't try this at home. 
Uh, and most of all, I hope you have fun. Thank you so much for joining me and watching along as we continue our week of pore painting. Uh, this has been Souffle Art. I'll see you next time.